the actual library that they may be listening for could probably very well love it. So I just try and avoid that as much as possible. Another tip too to look for is, is is when you're reaching out to companies, uh, never hesitate to to ask like you know when was when was the last time you guys placed something? What was your most recent placement? You know what do you what do you need? What do you place a lot of um, to kind of get an idea if an idea of if if they're gonna fit for you as well? You know you don't want to sign up with a a company that focuses on country music and you do EDM music, you know what I mean? Um, you know, you want to make sure it's going to be a good fit um, so that it can be successful for both parties. Um, so just do your research, see what kind of movies, what kind of shows they, they get stuff placed on. A lot of times they'll have their credits on there. Um, uh, be careful there is a lot of companies like new companies that come up and pop up and um they haven't been around usually if they've been around for a while you should be able to do a decent google search and um you know and kind of you know do some some background search on them or something just to see if they've been around for a while because a lot of them some of them pop up and they've just been around for like a year and then come to find out, they just signed a bunch of people who already had placements. So then they just put those placements as credits on their page. And it's just like, they haven't really secured a, a bunch of stuff. It's just, they signed people who, who already been putting in work. Um, so, you, I mean, you got situations like that. And, um, uh, Another question I get a lot is about the companies, you know, the pay to submit um, type of companies like Music X-Ray, Taxi, things like that. Um, I've personally used Taxi before some years ago when I, man, when I was very, very, very first starting to get started and, and learn about music licensing. Taxi was a legit company. My music personally wasn't it wasn't ready yet, you know, my mixing and stuff wasn't wasn't good and um, you know, I didn't have I didn't have the structure down and everything like I showed you guys. So it was just a lot of things I didn't have yet, so I didn't see a lot of success with Taxi. Um, another thing is that I always just try I try and go as close to the source as possible. Uh, so, you know, if I want to work with a music library, I'm gonna reach out to that music library directly, whereas Taxi is kind of like you kind of you you go through their system when they have a pitch, and then you send it to them, and then they have to critique it, they have to like it, and then if they like it, then they'll send it to the library. But you know, there's there's been situations where I would send something to one library, they didn't like it, but I would send it to another one, they loved it. So you could have situations like that where. You may send it to Taxi, they'd be like, ah, this is trash, but the actual library that they may be listening for could probably very well love it. So I just try and avoid that as much as possible. Um, Music X-Ray, I've gotten a couple deals through them. Nothing that has been placed yet that I know of, um, but that can get expensive too. Like if you're paying per submission, you know, uh, uh, save your money if you can. If it's a great opportunity and it's like, you know, you think it's worth 10, 15 bucks, or five bucks to submit. I mean, it's up to you at the end of the day. But um, one thing I'll do, like if I see something that seems cool on Music X-Ray, I'll just go on Google and Google the company and see if I can just submit directly. And a lot of times they'll, you know, they'll let you do it. They're just using Music X-Ray as kind of like a, you know, kind of like a filter. You filter out people who are serious, people who um, who aren't. So it's just a quick, quick tip.